It's 2 o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. Kevin McDonald is in the Clarenville station, waiting to take his last ride on the Newfoundland Railway. It's a railway he's known a long time. For over 40 years he rode these rails, hauling passengers and freight, first with steam, then oil, and finally the diesel, down the narrow gauge tracks, twisting and turning across the island. The 919 is on her way from Bishop Falls. A big train these days, they say, 60 cars, but they're all empty. They're being moved to a side track outside St. John's where they'll be auctioned or scrapped. It's hard for Kevin to accept. The Newfoundland Railroad has been in his family since the first tracks were laid. Right from the start, yeah, from uh, the railroad, from the time the railroad started until well up to the present time. My grandfather, my uncle, my father, uh, and myself, I joined in 1941, joined the Newfoundland Railroad. My grandfather came here from PEI in uh, 1878, 1879. They started the railroad around 1880 and they took the first train then across the island in 1898. Today, Kevin is going to ride on one of the last. One of his old buddies, Ray Stoyles, is at the controls as the 919 leaves Clarenville for St. John's. It takes five and a half hours, or thereabouts, to travel from Clarenville to St. John's by rail. Top speed most of the way is around 30 miles an hour. Kevin knows every foot of this line. He ran the train on this stretch of track the better part of 38 years. This come by chance. Passenger train stopped here one morning and the, it was very foggy. And they had an American tourist on. So he got out of his berth to go take a look around and he couldn't see anything. So he asked the brakeman, he said, uh, he, you know, he said, where are we? So the brakeman said, come by chance. Well, he said, my son, I couldn't come any other way, you know. It's very foggy there. Kevin has lots of memories of this train, but none as a passenger. He decides to head up to the lead engine where Ray lets him take over. He easily slips into his old role of engineer. Yeah, when you're at it so long, you know, you, you never forget it. You never forget it. After 40, 45 years, you, you don't forget that stuff. But it's sad to see her go, you know. And uh, the unions and the company, the government, they probably done everything they could. I'm not saying they done it all, but they done, they done the best they could, I suppose. Things change, you know. The railroad was down, there no traffic. I don't know whose fault that is. I got my own way of uh, thinking about that. I think they could have had a better system. They could have had a better system. But I think after our passenger trains went, that was the beginning of the end, you know. Newfie Bullet. Kevin remembers her well. Fast she wasn't. Newfoundlanders used to say she was mentioned in the Bible where it says the Lord made all things that creep and crawl. Another told of a man who decided to commit suicide by lying down on the tracks, only to die a week later from starvation, waiting for the bullet to pass by. But while she may have been slow, she was popular. Oh yes, everybody traveled by train, especially in Newfoundland, because there was no roads, you know. There's no roads anywhere, but boy, and uh, anybody who wanted to go across country had to go by train. St. John's to Portobast took 24 hours, but no one seemed to mind. At least she was on schedule. She wasn't too many days off schedule. You know, they had a lot of stops and a lot of passengers. And it was we only had five hours and 25 minutes to go from St. John's to Carver. We had to stop at every station. 
But we used to make it pretty well on time, yeah. But on time was slow, real slow. And people turned to the new alternative, the highway. They preferred the highway, I guess, the buses. They thought it was uh, much quicker. No doubt it probably was. With the end of the passenger rail service, also came the end of another tradition. They called it the Trouder Special. Trouder Special, leaving for all the fishing points. They left late in the evening of May 23rd. of singing and partying and drinking with their own special fortification against the cool spring air, heading for the ponds and streams between St. John's and Argentia. That was quite a dream. Nine or ten passenger cars full of people, you know, they all singing and yelling. Half of them feeling very happy, you know. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, you know, a guy wouldn't be able to Move too much under his own locomotion, so that uh, if he made a jump, he'd let it go out in the pond or something, but they didn't mind that too much. We're heading around Conception Bay now, past Avondale, through Holyrood, and along the shoreline to Conception Bay South. People still come out to watch the train pass. The train always seemed there was a certain attraction to it, you know. And they'd, uh, they'd be out waving to you, you know, as you go along. How's that make you feel? Oh, it makes you feel okay. Make you feel good, you know. Soon the 919 is in St. John's, waiting with the rest of the diesel engines for the official end of the Newfoundland Railway. Kevin locks up probably for the last time. The end of the line and an era has arrived. But when I look around, I can remember back when this yard was a real beehive, eh? you know. All those tracks here, and repair tracks, passenger yards, and the roundhouse, the shops down here. You know, men were just like flies, locusts. You know? Now you can look around, you don't see a soul. They're all gone, I mean. Everything is gone. It's too bad, really. I don't know if it's going to be good for the country. That remains to be seen, of course. They might have done the right thing, I don't know. I got my doubts about it. For midday, I'm Red Sharon.